Okay, fifth graders, this is Ms. Clark. We're going to get started with your videos for the week. I just went through Shobi and I've uploaded all of your assignments for the week. Um, there's no worksheets or anything like that this week. It'll just be you taking a picture of your classwork and your homework and uploading them to the correct spot on Shobi. With the videos, it's going to be one video for the whole week. So I'll upload the video on YouTube and I'll name it fifth grade video for week of August 31st through September 4th. I will go through each video and have it just like it is on your screen right now. It'll say Monday. We'll do the video for Monday. I'll stop and then Tuesdays will start. So you'll go through and just fast forward to the next day whenever you need to or you can back up and you can um, review any kind of concept you need to review. For Shobi, your assignment is due by 8 p.m. the night of the assignment. So Monday's homework and class work will be due by Monday at 8 p.m. Now some of you do not have your books, so I'm going to make Monday's assignment due on Tuesday, and then Tuesday's also due on Tuesday. I'm going to give you a little bit of leadway so you can get your books from school before you start, but make sure you understand that Tuesday four assignments are due. Monday's classwork, Monday homework, Tuesday classwork, Tuesday homework. So if you get your books on Monday, I would go ahead and start doing it so you're not stuck with four assignments on Tuesday for math. So each assignment will be due by 8 p.m. the same night and the videos will be posted for the whole week. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with expanded form. This should be a review from fourth grade. We did this last year. Start by looking at page four in your hardback book. If I don't specify um, workbook, then it means it's your hardback book. So let's look at the number 1,000. Give me just a second. 1,487. That's the first number they give you in the book. What you do is you look at each of the places and the values of each number. Start with the biggest one. One is in the thousands place and it has a value of 1,000. So to make that value, I say one times 1,000. And then I put a plus sign. Okay, then I look at four. Four is in the hundreds place and it has a value of 400. So to make that value, I say four times 100. I take the number right here and then I multiply it by the place value. And then I do a plus sign. Then I look at the number eight. It's in the tens place and the value is 80. So to make that into expanded form, I would do parentheses, eight times 10. Close the parentheses, put a plus sign. The last one is in the ones place, so I do seven times one. And that's all you would do to make standard, or sorry, expanded form. Standard form is the number they give you right there. So that's pretty much what you're doing for each of these. Let's do one more together, and then I'm gonna show you what else you have to do for this. I'm working on my phone right now until I get the iPad set up from school, so. Bear with me, it does give me a smaller space to kind of work these out, unlike last year. All right, so let's look at a bigger number because you are gonna have to go to the billions. Let's do a million. If you can do millions, you can do billions. 32,530,008. Now I wanted to show you this one because it has zeros in it. So pay attention to what we do with those zeros. First, let's look at the three. The three is in the 10 millions place. So to start, I need to do three times 10 million. Okay, and the computer is kind of lagging today, so it'll catch up eventually. Then I do my plus sign and I look at the two. Two is in the millions place. So I do two times one million. And then I put my plus sign. Then I look at the five. It's in the hundred thousands place. So I say five times one hundred thousand plus. Now the three. 
the three is in the ten thousands place. So I do three times ten thousand. Now I have three zeros. You can skip zeros. You don't have to do the zeros. So my last non-zero digit is eight. So I say plus eight times, that's supposed to be a time, sorry. To erase that. Times one. And then that's it. So that's how you do expanded form. You need to look at each place and then the value of that place and skip any zeros. I'm going to show you one more thing you need to know for today's classwork and basically it's going to be going backwards. I'm going to give you the expanded form and you're going to give me standard form which is just numbers. All right, so let's look at this one. If I give you four times 1,000 plus five times 100 plus nine times one. Feel free to use as much room as you can. This is lagging again. I'm sorry, it should pop up in just a second. If you're in your book, we're looking at number nine. All right, let me um, stop sharing my screen for a second and then I'm going to share it again and hopefully it'll pop up. There we go, starting to at least. There we go, okay, so we have it. So let's look at this one. This is expanded form going to standard form. So you would start by looking at your biggest place, which is thousands. I know that if I'm looking at a number with thousands, it's gonna have one, two, three, four spaces. Then I can fill in my spaces. Four times 1,000 is four. The hundred space is next. Five times 100 is five. Now look at this one. There's nothing for the tens, so I put a zero. And then nine time one, times one is nine. So you fill it in just like that. If there's not a place value in that expanded form, then you put a zero. You can't forget to put the zeros. They have to go there. So I'm gonna erase it and we're gonna try one more, and then I'll let you try your own for classwork. All right, so I might give you one like this. Three million plus 9,000 plus 40 plus eight. Now notice on this one, it does not have parentheses and that's fine. It can be written like this too. So we have 3 million. That means that we're going to have seven spaces to fill in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know that three goes here because it's 3 million. There are no hundred thousand, so I'll put a zero. There's no 10,000, so I'll put a zero. There's nine thousands. There's no hundred, so I'll put a zero. There's four tens and eight ones. Okay, so my number ends up being three million, let me put my commas, three million nine thousand forty-eight. Okay, so what your best bet to do is to draw your spaces out and fill it in. Go with your highest place value and draw your spaces out just like that. Okay, so classwork today is going to be page five, and this is all on Shobi. It's nine through 13. That's going to be taking them backwards like this. And then 15 through 18, and that's actually writing it in expanded form. Okay, so that is your classwork, and it's on Shobi for you. Homework is gonna be workbook page three, and I want you to do all of the homework, okay? So when you're done with the classwork and homework, I want you to post it on to Shobi by 8 p.m. Tuesday night. And it's only Tuesday this week, so you have time to get your books. All right, so this is gonna be the end of the Monday video. So on Monday, you'll stop here, and I'm gonna pause, and I'm gonna pick up in a second with Tuesdays. If you guys have any questions, just email me or message me on Class Dojo or Shobi, and I can help you out.
Okay, this is the beginning of our Tuesday video. So today, Tuesday, what you're going to do is review concepts from the first two lessons that we did. So what you'll be doing is looking at pages six and seven in your hardback book. This is going to be a classwork assignment for the day. You're going to be doing certain problems for review and emailing me, or not emailing me, but show being me a picture of that classwork. So let's look at six through seven together and we're gonna look at the numbers you have to do together. It's really not that many. So the first ones you're gonna do are one and two. So number one says, what is the standard form of each number? So in one, they give you the name written out in words. You tell me what number matches it. So you just put A, B, C, or D. On number two, they have expanded form. You tell me what number matches it and just tell me the letter. Then you're gonna to go to number five. And on number five, skip all the way down to that, you write that number out in expanded form for me. Stretch it out with the multiplication and addition. Then you're gonna to go to number eight. Number eight says write the number name. That's just writing it in words. Write it how you would say it out loud. Then number 17 on the next page. This one's pretty simple. Complete the following statements for the number 164,475,025,354. So number 17 says the digit seven is in the blank, blank place and then has a value of blank. So you're gonna tell me what place it's in. And remember place is a word, is it hundreds, thousands, whatever. The value is an actual number. It's the value 7,000. It's the value 70,000, okay? so. Do that one, and then 18 and 19 are the same thing. So 17, 18, 19. And then on number 20, I want you to look at problem solving. They give you the expanded form that a child wrote, and they want you to say what the mistake is. Where does she go wrong? And then what is the correction? So you're going to have two things on number 20. You're going to tell me what she did wrong and then how to fix it. Okay, so that is all you're gonna do for today a review and you're going to send me a picture on show me. Homework is gonna be workbook page four and that's already on show me for you to send me a picture of when you're done. And both of these things are due Tuesday at 8 p.m. Okay, so I'm going to end our Tuesday video here. If you have any questions, send me a message on show me or on Class Dojo. All right, guys, this is our Wednesday video. So today what we're going to do is start something new. So we're on page eight in your book. This is going to be something pretty new for everybody. This is exponents. This is where we take numbers that have a lot of zeros and make it simpler. So look at page eight with me and I'm going to read it with you. The sun is very strong. It hits Earth with an energy that is 10,000 times as much as the whole world uses. This number is a power of 10 and can also be written as 10 to the fourth power. Powers of 10 can be written in standard form or by using exponents with the base 10. The exponent tells how many times to use the base 10 as a factor. For a base of 10 and an exponent of zero, 10 to the zero equals one. All right, so let's look at that. I want you to write this down. 10 to the power of four. 10 is what we call our base, and it doesn't have to be 10, it could be, well, no, sorry, it does have to be 10 here. When you multiply it, it can be any number, but that's your base, 10. Your exponent, sorry, can change. That's what I was gonna tell you. Your exponent can change. It could be to the power of one all the way up. So that one will probably go to about a power of nine for us. And then when you get higher in math, it'll be higher. So this is the first thing you need to learn. On your test, you're gonna to have to label this, a base and an exponent. Okay, so look at your book, powers of 10. 
10 to the power of one basically means 10 times one. This means that you're going to multiply 10 four times. So 10 to the fifth power would be 10 times 10 five times. So I'm going to erase this and show you a little trick with it because I love math tricks. If I have 10 to the fifth, that means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's 10 multiplied five times. It's just an easier way to write it. So if I want to solve 10 to the fifth power, I would take my one here and then I would put five zeros after it. So this number here tells how many zeros. So one, two, three, four, five. So 10 to the fifth power equals 100,000. Okay, so that is what it means. Basically that five is how many zeros will go after that one. So I say one and add my five zeros. So let me show you another one like that. And this little trick is gonna make it a lot easier. All right, so this one, 10 to the eighth. 10 to the eighth power, and I see it's lagging a little bit, hopefully it'll catch up. Yep, there it goes. Would mean that I put a one, because that one right here, non-zero digits, and then I would say eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm put my commas. So 10 to the eighth power would be 100 million. Okay, so that's how you would solve those. When you're dividing by powers, you need to remove them, which we're going to get to in a second. Let me look real quick at what we're going to be doing today. All right, so let me give you a practice problem of what they're going to give you for classwork. The first thing I want you to know is what we just did, how to understand what a power is. Then they're going to give you some where they might give you 7 times 10 to the fourth power. Okay, it looks hard, but it is not. What you want to do is multiply 7 times 1 first. That gives me 7. I'm going to put it over here. Then this 4 here, my exponent, tells me how many zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 10 to the 7 times 10 to the 4th power is 70,000. Okay, so that is how you would do one like that. You would take the non-zero digits, multiply them, so seven times one is seven, and this tells you how many zeros to put. Okay, so let's do one more like that, sorry. One more, and then I'm gonna show you division. Okay, so for this one, let's do 12 times 10 to the third. Okay, so we have 12 and 1. Those are my non-zero digits. So 12 times 1 is 12. And this 3 tells me to put three zeros. So that would basically mean 12 times 10 times 10 times 10 equals 12,000. Okay? So let me show you a division 1 real quick. Division 1 is getting smaller. Remember we said before in fourth grade, when you multiply, numbers are getting bigger. When you divide, numbers are getting smaller. So they might give you one like this. 400 divided by 10 to the second power. This 2 right here in our exponent tells us how many zeros to take away. So let me look right here. If you look at page 8, it says when dividing by powers of 10, remove zeros. For example, they give you 31 billion divided by three to the third. They took away three zeros and gave you 31 million. So if we're looking at 400, 
we need to get rid of two zeros. So we get four. Remember 10 to the second power or 10 squared is what it's called would equal 100. So really we have 400 divided by 100 which equals four. It's just a quicker way of saying 100, 10 squared, okay? So that squared number or whatever number is right here in your exponent tells you how many zeros to knock off. So four would be your answer. Okay, so for classwork today, you're gonna to do pages eight and nine, numbers one through nine. Numbers one through three, you're just putting what is missing on the other side. If they're equal, that means the same thing has to be on both sides. Four through six and seven through nine is what we just did. So if you have any questions, let me know on Shobi or Class Dojo. Homework is gonna be workbook page five, okay? So this is gonna be the end of Wednesday's video and I'm gonna pick up on Thursday. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, this is Thursday's video. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday with powers of 10. We're going to review a little bit of more of that. So remember, when you're doing a power of 10, let me tell you something I didn't tell you yesterday. 10 to the second power, we say that as 10 squared. Okay, anything with the second power you say is squared. If we have 10 to the third power, we say that is 10 cubed. Okay, so those are just some vocabulary words you need there. 10 squared, 10 cubed. And then after that is 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, and so on with the powers. So yesterday we looked at how to multiply and divide the numbers. Today we're going to look at actually finding missing powers. So today's classwork is gonna be 16 through 27, so let's look at that together. I'm gonna to show you a little bit more with these. And this is the exponent part of um, PEMDAS we learned last year where we do first problems um, with multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, order of operations. So this is the part last year that we didn't do that you'll be doing now. So if we have something like number 16, 701 times 10, and it has a question mark here because we need to figure it out, equals 7,010. All right, so the first thing we did, if we're going backwards, we need to look at what is 701 times one? It's 701. So how many zeros are left? Just one. So that means 10 would be to the first power. And usually we don't say to the first power, but in this case, they do want you to put to the first power, okay? Number 17, they want you to actually find the answer. So if you're going backwards and you're trying to find a missing power, first find out what the multiplied answer would be, and you can underline it like I did, and then whatever zeros are behind it would be the number you put here, okay? So let's do another one. Let me see if I can find another one like that. Sorry, it takes so long to erase. All right, let's look at one. You see, I don't wanna do one you're gonna do. All right, so write this one down. 17 times 10 to the question mark power, because we don't know, equals 17. And then five zeros. All right, so 17 times 10 to the question mark power equals 1,700,000. So the first thing I do is say, okay, I did 17 times one, 
that equals that 17 right there. Then how many zeros do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So this question mark has to be five. Okay? So that's what you're gonna do today. So for classwork today, you're gonna do page nine, numbers 16 through 27. When you're done with that, you're gonna take a picture of it and give it to me on Shobi for classwork. Homework is gonna be workbook page six, which is practicing more of these powers, okay? All right, Thursday's video is gonna stop here and I will pick you up on Friday. All right, last video of the week. This is Friday's video. Today we're going to kind of stop in the middle of all of this and we're going to check our progress with word problems. Sorry. So look at page 10. Our emails are going to pop up like that, my dad. On page 10, it gives you a problem solving page using four step process. And the reason I like this new book is because it doesn't just give you word problems and expect you to figure out how to solve them. It tells you how. So look at the top of 10 and read with me. An animal is classified as a species in the phylum it belongs to. The number of species in a phylum varies widely. The phylum, hold on, we're going to pronounce this together, Paganophora has about 150 species. There are about 100 times as many species in the phylum Anelida. Anelida, that's what we're going to say. About how many species are in the phylum Anelida? Read and understand. Read the problem more than once to find the key information beside what the question is. So the key information is there's 100 and species, 150 species in Paganophora and 100 times as many is in a hundred times as many, sorry, in Anelida. How many species in Anelida? Represent the situation. So the first thing you need to do is figure out all the information they give you and then what the actual question is. It says use letters to represent the number of each species. Let A represent the number of species in, oh God, I hate that word, the A one, and P represent the number in P. And equate, write an equation, A equals P times 100. So A equals P times 100. So that means that 100 times Paganophora would equal Anelida, okay? To find the number of species in Anelida, solve the equation. So we have A equals P times 100. We know that there's 150 times 100 that will equal um, the species in Anelida. So you go back to the problem and you see that 150 times 100 is the number that equals A. So again, let's go back. It says 100 times as many species of Gonophora are Anelida. So you need to read it carefully, it does be kind of confusing. Then your book takes it and they do a step further. They say A equals 150 times 10 squared. So they take that 100 and make it 10 squared. Then we can solve it pretty easily. 15 times one is 15. And the two tells us there should be two zeros after it. Oh, I'm sorry, we should have 150. Sorry, go back. They don't mean 15, it's 150, sorry. 150 times one is 150 with two zeros after it. So 15,000 would be your answer. So there are 15,000 species in the phylum Anelida. I want you to get in the habit of making sure that your answers are in complete sentence form. Make sure that they are giving a unit and make sure they're in complete sentences. Then it says, look back, check whether the answer makes sense. The phylum Anelida has more species than Paganophora. 15,000 is greater than 150, so that answer makes sense. So what you're going to do today is figure out 
one through eight. So let's do number one together and then your classwork is gonna to be to figure out the rest. And I'm sorry this has so many big names in it, but it actually is helpful because this is what you're gonna be doing in science pretty soon. So let's look at page 11, number eight. Not number eight, number one, sorry. You're gonna be doing one through eight, but we're gonna do number one together. The phylum periphera has about 9,000 species, which is 10 times as many in the phylum Nemertia. How many species are in the phylum Nemertia? So we need to make some kind of equation. So we need to figure out how many are in M. That is Nemertia. So we can say N equals. We want to know how many are in N. We know how many are in Porifera, which is going to be our P for this. So there's going to be P times 10. Okay, so we know that in Nemertia is going to be 10 times the periphera. So we know the periphera equals 9,000 times 10. And that's going to give us our n. So if we solve 9,000 times 10, this is what we did last year. 9 times 1 is 9. And then count all these zeros to put after it. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 90,000 species are in the phylum Nemertia. Okay, so that's how you would solve number 1. So your classwork for today is going to be 1 through 8. And that's on Shobi already. And then there is no homework because it's Friday. So go ahead and get all these assignments due and turned into me today. This is the only one due today by 8 p.m. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Have a good weekend.